to be here. You know, we walked through the plaza, me and my son earlier, and I got a chance to look at the wall, and it has the list of names of people who lost properties on Old Rondo. And he looked up and he saw the name Melvin Carter. And he was confused because I'm not old enough to have lost, uh, I'm getting old, but I'm not that old enough to have lost a property on Rondo. And he wondered, was it me? And I said, no. He wondered, was it my father, Melvin Carter, who's here somewhere, I don't see him. Where is he at? There he is. Hey, Dad. And I said, no, and he figured out that it was my grandfather, Melvin Carter Sr., we lost last summer, uh, who grew up on Old Rondo, whose dad, Mim Carter, used to teach the kids of Old Rondo how to play musical instruments. I say that to say I'm here today to celebrate something of a family reunion because Rondo is our community family. And Rondo is what I grew up thinking of as a uh, real family, uh, as our annual celebration of family that we have each summer. And what I appreciate about our board of directors, what I appreciate about uh, the incredible group of people who's leading this vision forward is that I've gotten a chance to see Rondo transform from a celebration of a community past to a recognition of a community present to an architecture of a community that we are still building for the future. As we open this plaza, as we envision a land bridge over I-94, that's a large vision. As we envision a land bridge over I-94, these are, these are transformational opportunities to move our community forward and build our community for our children. I gotta tell you, I appreciate Commissioner Zelly for the way he's built and supported this vision. I appreciate Council Member Tao for the way that he's moved this vision forward and supported it from City Hall. I definitely appreciate, we need a big round of applause for Marvin Anderson. You know, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. And Marvin's vision uh, along with my old coach Floyd Smaller for Rondo Days, the vision for the plaza, the vision for the land bridge has helped move us forward and I really appreciate your vision and your passion for this work. Um, one of the honors that I get to do as mayor is I get to just proclaim stuff. <laughs> and I'm not going to read this whole proclamation because my staff likes them whereas clauses. <laughs> And there's a lot of whereas's to celebrate, but it says, whereas during the late 1950s and early 1960s, the historic Rondo neighborhood, the city of St. Paul's flourishing African-American community was fractured and destroyed by the construction of Interstate 94. And whereas Interstate 94's path through the historic Rondo neighborhood devastated our community, causing lifelong pain and suffering to our African-American ancestors. And whereas the city of St. Paul values the diversity that exists today in the Rondo neighborhood, now called the Summit University neighborhood, and strives to ensure no community will again experience such a devastating loss. Right. I'll come back to that. And whereas the city of St. Paul honors the Rondo neighborhood for its unwavering strength and resilience and, it's committed to, and is committed to continuing to support its well-being and growth, now, therefore, I, Melvin Carter, mayor of the city of St. Paul, Rondo mayor of the city of St. Paul, do hereby proclaim today, Saturday, July 14th, 2018, to be Rondo Commemorative Plaza Day in the city of St. Paul. Thank you, Marvin. The final thing I'll say is this. The proclamation I just read said we're committed to assuring that atrocity like this never again repeats itself in St. Paul. You know, I want to share with you, you know this already, that I'm St. Paul's first mayor of color. And you know already 
that we have some of the worst disparities in the nation right here in our community. What surprises me is how often we say those two things as though they're unrelated to one another. When in fact, our exclusive processes through which we've made policy, through which we've decided land use decisions, through which we've established the city's budget and resource decisions, that exclusive, those exclusive processes are the cause of our disparities. So our work to ensure that that never happens again requires the opposite of exclusive processes, inclusive processes. So our goal and ambition and commitment to making sure that this never happens again requires your help. And that's why our administration has been focused on asking for your help, on engaging you. We're currently in a budget process that I'll ask you to plug into. But get involved, get engaged, and help us move our community forward together. Thank you very much. Let's give another hand for our mayor, Mayor Melvin Carter. We got a day, y'all. We got a day. Can I get a day? No, I'm just kidding. All right. Okay, next up, we will have an open, the opening prayer from Pastor Gill. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Let us pray, shall we? Almighty and everlasting God, we come before you here today under this open air, first of all, to say thank you for life, strength, and purpose. We invite your presence here to this great occasion as we remember uh, the lives lived, the sacrifices made, and the contributions given uh, for this great occasion. Lord, we are here today also uh, to see the vision for the future but also at the same time, may we never forget uh, the cause of sacrifices made. With that having been said, let the people of God say, amen. amen. Thank you so much, God bless you. All right, next we are gonna have a presentation of flag and pledge of allegiance from the Pilgrim Baptist Boy Scouts, troop number 61. Now, I'm, a, I'm a Girl Scout, y'all. So we gotta show our Boy Scouts some love. Under the leadership of Scoutmaster Dwayne Billups, Boy Scout Troop Number 61 of Pilgrim Baptist Church will present the flag and the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us stand. You may be seated. Thank you so much, Boy Scouts. I should have worn my Girl Scout vest. That's what I should have did. <laughs> All right. Next, we are going to have a selection by the Sons of Levi. Once again, America the Beautiful. My apologies by Alan J. Hawk. Give him a hand as he comes.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Lift every voice and sing. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know all right, all right. I was about to jump right in like a choir. We was about to be a big choir here. All right. Of course, these two amazing people that I'm getting ready to introduce, uh, I'm so honored to serve with them on the Rondo board. Um, one is my friend and one is a, is a mentor for to all of us, I'm sure. So I would like to welcome both Gail Smaller, co-chair of the Rondo Avenue Inc., and also one of our Rondo founders, uh, Floyd G. Smaller Jr., co-founder of Rondo Avenue Inc. And let's welcome them at this time. For welcome. Representing my dad today. Um, don't ever call me up after Melvin. <laughs> you know how concerts work, right? The headliner goes last. You, you know that, right? Okay. <clears throat> First, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Anderson, man, for. Uh, I know you can't tell, but Mr. Anderson is not a young man anymore. <laughs> but uh, you couldn't tell, man, over this last year, Mr. Anderson. We appreciate your hard work, man. We've been seeing you everywhere. Um, being able to raise the money to bring this vision to fruition, um, you know, hats off to you, man. We, we appreciate you more than you know. And I think the whole community does as well. Um, the next thing I'd like to say is uh, we started off with a, a, a wonderful choir. We're under a revival-esque type tent. And I just want to remind everybody that the commemorative park is not a memorial. We're not here today because we're at a funeral. The spirit of Rondo is still alive. And our elders, in my generation, and in the young people. So as we move forward, we need to remember that Rondo is still alive and that the spirit of Rondo is still alive. And I would like to thank Mr. Anderson and my father for giving me the opportunity to uh, co-chair the Rondo board and be one of the leaders pushing the, forward, the, the uh, festival forward as well as some of the vision that we have for the community and incorporating young people. About two days ago, I was browsing LinkedIn, just seeing if anybody wanted to connect with me or <clears throat> look for messages. And I came across a young sister's profile. And everyone, you know, when you go on LinkedIn, everyone has their job credentials, their uh, college credentials. This sister had all her credentials listed, but the first thing listed on her LinkedIn page was Rondo Raised. Before everything. And what that told me is that we have a generation of young people that are gonna come forward that will be able to grab that torch from you all and carry this vision forward. But you can't be lazy, though. That's one thing these brothers have showed us, is you can't be lazy. You got to work hard. You have to be committed. And you have to be willing to submit to the vision that the elders have laid down for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for those remarks. All right. Coming up, we have a bunch of amazing leaders, of course, in our community. And I am going to call them at random. Y'all ready? All right, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so we are going to welcome at this time Ward 1 Council Member Di Tao here for remarks. Give him a hand as he comes. and probably represent uh, Ward 1 of the St. Paul City Council. It's such an honor and amazing day to be here to be celebrating with you this special place uh, to celebrate our neighbor's great uh, tragic past, but also the incredible revival and vibrant present. And it didn't get here on its own. 
it got here because of all of you. So let's give yourself a big round of applause. I want to thank uh, uh, everybody over at uh, Rondo Inc., Avenue Inc., Marvin Anderson and his leadership team, the entire team. They, I watched them over the couple of years and they worked tirelessly on this project. Your commitment, determination, and leadership is an inspiration to all of us. Because if we have this sort of leadership across the city, we can get Rondo all across the city. <laughs> Thank you to our past and, and present uh, city staff, the county and the state for, for their work on this project. Um, I want to thank our generous donor and partners for their support. I know that this project uh, would not come to life without their uh, financial support, so we appreciate you. The, the story of Rondo, to me, it's, a, it's an American story of structural racism, trauma and loss, displacement and shattered dream. But it's also an American story of great resilience and resistance of confronting the past, the present, to build a future together. It is also a story of unity, healing, of human love for each other, and the pursuit of our highest potential. And we saw earlier our mayor, Melvin Carter. He is that story of resiliency, of achieving his highest potential, of our highest potential. Marvin Anderson is another example of that resiliency and that resistance of structural racism. Yay. It is our story, and it belongs to all of us. All of us who walked these streets 50 years ago, 100 years ago, or 100 years from now. We are the character in each other's lives, and it is our duty to stand up for each other, to unite across race and culture and the diversity that I see in this room, in this space. It is our duty to work together, to gather those shattered dreams, the dreams of our bro of black brothers and sisters, parents and grandparents. It is time for us to restore and achieve those dreams together, to reinforce with equitable public policy and tools that will produce liberty and justice for all, as we have pledged earlier. To, let's work to reunite and reconnect Rondo, the land bridge, with economic opportunity, Let's never stop trying to square the circle of structural racism and to honor our commitment to each other. Let's keep the spirit of Rondo in our hearts and our wisdom for generations to come. Let our children learn from this atrocity and work with each other to ensure that this never happen in our city again and to advance equity in the city of St. Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Daitao. Next, we are going to have remarks from State Representative Rita Moran. Let's give her a hand. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Rena Moran, the State Representative for this district here. And I am so honored and excited to be here today. I do want to just open up by saying thank you, Marvin Anderson for your tireless work, for the Rondo Inc. and the members, for your vision and your hard work and your dedication to the Rondo memory. And as I was thinking about what do I say today, and so I'm always a testimony of, of mine, how things, has, how things have connected to me that made me a part of Rondo. But I also just want to say before I start that and say thank you, Rondo, for seeing a place for the state to invest in the plaza. So I just thank you for that vision. And so from the moment that I set foot in St. Paul, I was connecting to members of the Rondo community and the heard about the journey of the Rondo community and the displacement of the families of the Rondo community. But not just the displacement, but to hear how vibrant that community was, the connections, the relationships, the family, it was the fabric of the Rondo community. And so to have visionaries, to be able to say the loss happened, but how 
do we connect and allow the generations after those families to continue to know that history, to learn from that history, and then bring a community of people together. And that's what it did for me. That's what it's done for so many of us who were, did not have the fathers or the grandfathers who were part of Rondo. That history, that oral history that I heard, right, began to allow so many of us to say that was not right, and we have to continue to fight for justice, equity, fairness that represent all of us. And the plaza is a big part of allowing us to see that vision of the old Rondo to connect us of today with the memory so that oral Rondo is now a staple in this community. So as we travel and walk around this community, we have a place to go to, to know that history, hear that history, and to become a part of that history. So I am excited that we was able to get the dollars and the hard work and the commitment of the Rondo, of the old Rondo, the new Rondo, and the future Rondo to have a place that we can go here that is about not just the old Rondo, but the present Rondo and the future Rondo. And I'm excited to be a part of that, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, State Representative Rena Moran. Okay, really quick, I need to take a break. Anybody have a church fan? Anybody? No? All right. Okay, keep the program moving. All right. Next, we are going to have remarks from Commissioner of Transportation, Commissioner Zeli. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on behalf of Governor Mark Dayton and the state of Minnesota, what an honor it is uh, to be here today to commemorate this plaza. Um, you know, I love the themes that we're hearing this morning, um, that this plaza is not hermetically sealed about the past but really a springboard and a vision for the future. It was two years ago, three years ago, that I had the honor to be at that site, representing the legacy of a highway department that ripped apart a neighborhood. And although it's difficult to have the honor to apologize, to have a reconciliation about a past that should never have happened, where leadership valued cars before people, and concrete before community. And we've learned our lessons. So it's not about just that past, but it's about where we are now and how we go forward. And so to hear from the mayor and Mr. Anderson and so many of you to have that inspiration and vision uh, has transformed uh, how we, who are the curators of infrastructure, think about how we build going forward. Our reconnecting I-94 team has learned a lot from individuals and from events like today. We've reached out to hundreds of people, stakeholders, not just here in Rondo, but throughout the metropolitan area. And it's really gratifying to see that spirit of Rondo isn't just in Rondo, it's around the entire area. There's sons and daughters of Rondo, another generation, I personally run into the other day at, at Uptown in other parts of the state. So there's a great legacy here, and there's great momentum towards something that is based upon the principles and the vision that come here first, the leadership first, from this wonderful community. So I am uh, thrilled to uh, be able to articulate our commitment, our continuing commitment, to have a new kind of communication the kind of communication where we listen, the kind of commu uh, communication where we respond and where we think about how we bring everybody together and maintain the vitality that is clearly still present in Rondo and throughout this uh, area. So uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this. I'm looking so much forward to the years ahead. And uh, for that, we will always be engaged as a department and as citizens uh, toward a brighter future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner.
He was speaking about legacy, and I am so proud that I am a part of the Ron Rideau legacy. Uh, grandmother uh, passed away before I was even born, but family um, raised here in Rondo, and I'm definitely a product of that, and I'm so grateful for our elders and um, those that came before us that paved the way. And so let's just get, can we just give a hand for our ancestors and for those that came before us that paved the way and where we're going. I'm sure if she is here, she would probably be crying right now. So I'm a little, just thought about that when we were talking about legacy. All right, moving forward, we are going to have another musical selection from the Sons of Levi. Let's give them a hand. Y'all can do better than that. Let's give them a hand. Lord, I got a long pair of wings, I'm gonna fly 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anybody got a mind to do right? I don't hear the church. Anybody? <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Sons of Levi. That was amazing. Give them another hand. Thank you so very much. They will be here throughout the day. The party will keep jumping, y'all. So if y'all gotta go home, come back, do what y'all gotta do, but we are gonna be here all day, pretty much, in this wonderful heat. So, <laughs> make sure you come back and hear some amazing artists. We are going to be here as folks are going um, on tours of the plaza. Okay, next we are going to have our keynote. We're going to have our keynote come at this time. Dr. Mary K. Murray Board, who is the edu educator and doctor of Rondo, yes, okay, let's give her a hand as she's coming, and I'm going to just speak a little bit about her, she's so beautiful, look at her, I think we're matching today, look at us, someone, we have to get a picture, yes, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk about you for a little bit, can I talk about you for, okay, so Dr. K. Murray Boyd, Boyd is a daughter of Rondo, prior to her retirement in 2001, Mrs. Boyd, served as an area superintendent for St. Paul Public Schools. We have some color there, y'all. <laughs> and so I'm not going to read all of this. I'm sure she's going to share a bit more about herself. But we are so happy to have you, and I am excited to hear your remarks. Thank you so much. Give her another hand. Dr. Mary Kay. I said Mary Kay. Mary Kay Murray Boyd. Thank you. Hotel. Hotel. I greet you in the spirit of the ancestors. Hotep is a greeting from an ancient Egypt, which means peace. And I want to thank the choir because I needed that. I needed that. It just reminded me of being back in church when my grandmother was hooping and hollering. Good morning to everyone gathered here on this very important day when we are dedicating this commemorative plaza that offers the history of Rondo past, of its destruction, and valuable lessons of preparation as we move forward. When I walked around the plaza, I became emotional. As I looked over the list of homes, names, businesses, buildings, recreational spaces, offices that were destroyed, in the name of urban renewal to build a highway. This list represents real people who lived the spirit of the South African term Ubuntu, which means I am because you are. Or you are because I am. I am what I am because of who you all are. On my walk, looking at pictures, Remembering faces from my childhood and reading the history, the image of the mythical Sankofa bird kept coming up for me. The body of the bird poised to move forward toward the future while the head was turned as if looking back to where it came from. Perhaps to draw strength from those who came before us. Maybe it represents a time to pause Take stock of its surroundings, strategizing, focusing on building a better and stronger community for the children. The Rondo community I grew up in had a thriving economy, home ownership for many, valued education and high expectations for its children to give back to the community. The hope was pulled out from under us when our little village was destroyed. Those early Rondo residents had a vision that their children would be to do better than they did. Since Rondo was first a community of immigrants from mostly Eastern European countries and blacks from the segregated South, they must have recognized the beauty and strength in their diversity because they made it work. Today, more than ever, we need to call upon the spirit of Rondo call upon the spirit of grit 
perseverance, labor, and love. Align our heads with our bodies, our hearts with our minds, our actions with our vision, and together focus on community building and moving forward. Recently, I was moved by the words of a pastor who said, you must reposition the problem. You must reposition your posture. And you must have patience. Let me share with you how I thought about those words. We hear, read, and see statements and statistics about what is wrong with black people, people of color, immigrants, people who don't speak English, people who are other able. I see the problem as obstacles, roadblocks, and such things that can be removed, changed, or enlightened. There are circumstances we find ourselves in that make it necessary that we pause and reposition our posture. Raise your head, straighten up, look back, inhale, and take in that spirit of tough love that kept our ancestors and those living legends steadily moving forward. Right. I don't subscribe to the old meaning of patience, which meant, just wait, it takes time. It takes time to change laws. It takes time to change minds. I believe in the power of urgency. We can't sit around and wait for change. We have to vote, get to know our neighbors, and join together to get rid of this hierarchy of human value under which we live at this time. All, each and every one of us has value. Our children need to know that no matter where they were born, they are loved and valued. We must have patience with one another as we listen and learn from the stories of our elders and our new immigrants. We can learn to practice patience with one another. That is another way of the Rondo forebears that they showed love. The Rondo geographical village is gone, but the Rondo spirit lives on. I want to share a recent example of that spirit. Some of you may know that I recently lost my brother, Bill Murray, through an unexpected accidental drowning last Sunday. He was raised in the Rondo community, had roots in this community. I honor his memory today because I can stand here and say that he truly lived the values and the teachings and the love of Rondo. Our family has been held up and supported by the love of Rondo and beyond. Billy, as I called my baby brother, and his wife Beth raised their children to get their education, work hard, help others, and enjoy life and each other. From the beginning of the Martin Luther King Jr. Day marches, he never missed one. He took his children, then his grandchildren. Even when they were too young to walk, he carried them. We often marched as a three-generation family. He taught his children by example, the importance of voting. He was a musician as well, as owner of his own window washing business. When our mother was in a nursing home, he would get a few of his musician friends together and go entertain the residents. Like our father, James Murray, Billy never met a stranger. He has friends from many different cultures. Billy lived the Rondo spirit. Our children need us to know them, to show them how to live an inclusive, productive, and loving life. We must take the responsibility and the development, the education, and the nurturing of our children, all of our children. Regardless of whether your people were among the early settlers of Russian, Latvian, German, Jewish, Italian, or African American descent, or among the more recent settlers, Hmong, Oromo, Karen, Somali, and more. Remember that we are a community. My hope is that this plaza, from this plaza, you will gain an understanding of what the people of Rondo endured and accomplished. This story is important to the city of St. Paul and beyond. 
Where do you see yourself in this story? What is your story going to be? Bring the children to the plaza to learn about the Rondo story. Teach them ways they can add to the story. Brothers and sisters, the Rondo Community Plaza is here as a historical guide, but the spirit of Rondo is in the people, in all of us. And so, my brothers and sisters, I say, welcome to the Rondo Community Commemorative Plaza. Thank you. Thank you so much for those inspirational words, powerful words. Thank you so very much. All right, next we are going to have an introduction of, a, of someone that we all love and appreciate that has done some tremendous work here. Uh, we are going to have the introduction of uh, Mr. Anderson, Marvin Roger Anderson from Nathaniel Kali. Thank you, let's give him a hand. This outfit, by the way, I love this. Can I have that? <laughs> the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Hotel. Hotel. Not so long away. It is with great honor that I stand up here to uh, introduce this wonderful, wonderful brother great humanitarian and a uh, great role model, a brother that have worked long and hard. You know, it seemed like it wasn't too long ago when they, uh, they took our home, our sense of community, they uh, disrupted our economic, social, and political network. They took away our land, our ability to transfer land, which is the greatest source of, of transferring wealth in this country. And many of them thought that they were writing the last chapter of Rondo. But because of Floyd Smaller and this brother, Roger Anderson, they started a whole new book, not just a new chapter. Many of you know Roger graduated from Morehouse, from Hastings College in San Francisco. He went on to the University of Minnesota, got an MA in li library science. He was appointed the state law librarian and served with distinction for over 20 years. This brother could have gone on and rolled off into the sunset, but his heart and soul and spirit would not allow the last chapter of Rondo to be written. When this plaza, when he first conceived the idea, he wanted to try to save the building as a museum. And Commissioner Carter, who we owe a debt of gratitude to for this project, and others looked at it and it was structurally unsound. But this, this brother didn't stop his mission. And so I just hope and pray uh, Almighty God continue to bless you and, and we thank your lovely wife, Gloria. Is she here? Gloria? We thank her for sharing you with us because, brother, you be on the run 24-7. And I asked you once, I said, man, when you take it, that you just go nonstop. I think you said beef juice and ginger. All right. So that's a message to everybody out here that's struggling with, with energy and a clear mind to operate. So without further ado, thank Almighty God for this brother for putting us in our presence for inspiring us and uh, having us to move forward, not just dealing with the plaza and the past, but 
putting together the reconnect round. So future generations not only will walk through the plaza and see and understand and read about how we live, but also they will have an opportunity to see how we build for the future. Thank you so much. NAACP. It was the home of the local 516 Union Hall, the Royal Gooden's Restaurant, Young Brothers Barbershop, a credit union. So when the building was de declared it had to be destroyed, we decided that we wanted to have a burial for 820 Concordia, we call it. So we went to Brooks Funeral Home. We had people speaking on behalf of the building, people who had worked in the building. And then when we left the Brooks Funeral Home, we came down here to where the building had been destroyed, and we did an old African tradition. We took a small cup of gin, and we poured the gin into the ground in the memory of our ancestors. One of the problems was, the gin didn't get in on the floor, on the ground, it got into our bodies. <laughs> More gin got in me than I really wanted that afternoon. And so I said, I don't know how, we're going to do something on this ground. We're not going to let this ground die. We're going to build something. And the next morning, someone said, do you know what you said last night? I said, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> but Nick heard me. Nick Khalid heard what I said. And before I knew it, Nick Khalid called and said, the city of St. Paul will grant you a grant to prepare and to study what can be done on that property. So it was because Nick Kalik, and he doesn't even drink Jim, I think I had his, <laughs> that we got started and it was Nick Kalik and his assistant at the time, Noel Nix. I think Noel Nix is here, Some there's Noel. The two of them encouraged us, and that was four years ago. And Commissioner Carter got this project started. So Nick, thank you for that introduction. Thank you for remembering and getting us started on this long journey. I remember Rondo for the fun we had. I remember Rondo through the good and the bad. I remember the people. I remember the places. I remember old folks, the children, and their bright, shiny faces. I remember the streetcar rides on Sunday afternoon. I remember playing hide and seek under a bright harvest moon. I remember Oatmeal Hill and Cornmill Valley. I remember fist fights, playing the dozens, and running through alleys. I remember looking for bicycle parts at the old city dump. And I remember going to parties, dances, and cellar jumps. I remember the institutions and the pleasures they brought. I remember when they decided to wipe Rondo out. I remember when the bulldozers and the cranes came our way, bringing misery and destruction every single day. I remember the holes, the dust, and the noisy sound 
as they buried our history deep into the ground. <laughs> I remember the cries the people made as they cut down the trees that gave us shade. The memories are as fresh as if yesterday because in our hearts and minds, they will never take Rondo away. Those words were written at 12.05 a.m. on Sunday, March 20th, 1983, by my co-founder, who cannot be here today, Floyd G. Smaller, Jr. 35 years ago, Floyd gave me that poem, and I have treasured it, and we have published it throughout the years in all of our publications. So it is with sadness that I, Floyd can be here today, and it is with sadness that four other people, part of our Rondo community, are not with us today, who have suffered a lot in the last 14 days. Our friends, we have lost a daughter, a brother, a granddaughter, and a husband. So join me please in a moment of silence for Dwayne Phillips, the Scout Master of Troop 61, our speaker Mary Kay Murray Boy, our parade captain Odell Johnston, and Gaynell Ray, a former member of the Rondo Avenue Board of Trustees, take a moment of silence and bring your ancestors and your friends into this space, if you will. All right. Gone are the days when a street sweeper, a waiter, a porter, a barber, a packing house worker, a maid, a beautician, and a house cleaner could live side by side with a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a poet, a musician, or an architect in a community equally enjoyed by everyone without regard of their status or designation in the outside world. Thus was the community of Rondo. That was then, and this is now, but nevertheless, we remember Rondo for the security and the safety, the rites of passage, the myths, and the legends handed down year after year by elders to us youth sitting at their feet. It was a time when the ups and downs of an often hostile outside world could be dismissed in the smell of our food, the laughter of our jokes, the style of our clothing, the shine on our shoes, or in the rhythm of the way we danced in a world all of our own. For the past 34 years, Rondo Avenue, Inc. has proven its extraordinary commitment to preserving, enhancing, and sharing the rich heritage for future generations. Today, after four years, four years of planning, fundraising, and construction, we will dedicate the Rondo Commemorative Plaza as a permanent site to tell the story of Rondo in a new and exciting venue. So it is with a great deal of pride that on behalf of our board of directors that I welcome you to this small but powerful place that we believe is the nation's first, the United States' first space dedicated to a community that lost itself through adverse governmental action. So we invite you to do, we're going to provide tours throughout the day. We're going to have a wonderful ceremony here from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, the food, truck, food trucks will be here. We have entertainment coming from throughout the community, and we hope that you will be able to spend some time with us this afternoon. And as you go through your tours, let me tell you just a couple of quick things about the tours that you should be aware of. 
Number one, the site of the Plaza 820 Concordia was originally the site of McGill's grocery store. Many of us. And the McGill family is here. Would you please stand up and be recognized? They come from Duluth, they come from Georgia, they come from all over this city, the state of St. Paul. There's Tom, there's Paul, there's Sandy, there's Steve, there's the boys. Thank you so much for being a part of this celebration. This plaza was designed. The plaza was designed, and this gives us great joy. The plaza was designed, the architects of the plaza, James Garrett, Nathan Johnson, and Lisa Washington. Are they here? All right. James Garrett, James Garrett is the grandson of Jim Griffin, who had brought the first membership in Rondo. Nathan Johnson is the grandson of Earl McGee, who was followed me as president of Rondo Avenue King. And Lisa Washington is the granddaughter of Kitty, Kitty Murray, who was a Murphy. wonderful Murphy. Murphy, who was the first volunteer chairperson for Rondo Avenue back in 1983. And under her leadership, 600 people became members of Rondo Avenue. So please give them a wonderful round. The project manager for the plaza was Lou Zachary, who was the son of Lou Zachary of the Zachary family. Is Lewis here? The artist who did the wind chime is Seitu Jones. And Seitu here. Please make sure you see the wind chime. And Art Gardner, who's also here with the representatives of the Thor Construction Company. Who's here from Thor? D'Angelo Anderson. They're not related, but stand up, young man, so people can see. He represents Thor Construction Company that built the plaza. Thank you for being here. We have a 40-foot high marker that's illuminated by night. So drive back by at night. It's illuminated in the words of Rondo on the side. This was designed by James Garrett, Can Be Seen. We have the wind chimes that have been designed by Seitu Jones and Roger Cummings. It will be able to play accords when we get it finally adjusted. And we also have an exhibit wall that was designed by Terry Schiller. Is Terry here? Yeah. Terry, Terry. Hey, Terry. Terry designed an exhibit wall that tells the past, the present, and the future of Rondo. And one thing about that exhibit wall that I want to call to your attention is it was touched upon by Mary Kay. When we came to Rondo, we were welcomed by the Jewish community and the other people who already lived in Rondo. We lived in their homes, we sometimes worked in their stores, and we sometimes purchased their stores when they moved to another part of the city. So we were welcome, and it's part of the Rondo tradition, as part of what we're trying to do with this plaza, is to welcome our new neighbors to the community, who now live in the homes, who now walk the streets, who now breathe the same air that we do as a community. So it is my great pleasure, oh, when you go to the plaza, you will see four panels that we have, have prepared by experts from the Somali, from the Karen, from the Oromo, and the Hmong community, because we want them to feel welcome in our plaza. This is a public space, and because of that, I am so honored to introduce representatives from those communities to give a brief, to say some brief words to our gathered audience today. So I'd like to begin with Jasmine Lai Chang, who represents the 18 Clan Council 
of the Hmong community. Jasmine, would you come forward, please? Good morning, family and friends. Actually, my name is Jasmine Lee King, and I represent Hmong 18 Council. I am one of the I am the first and only Hmong woman to represent Hmong 18 Council and to be on the 18 Council. This council is usually based on 10 members of Man Orient, but today we have moved forward in this community and we have changed with the new generation. So I am the first Hmong woman on the Hmong 18 Council. I was also a previous St. Paul Police Department Commissioner for the Internal Affairs of Police Civilian Review. So it is my pleasure to be here. And on behalf of Hmong 18 Council, on behalf of President Ma Tai Vang, who is the president of our council, as we gather here today to celebrate and reunite the community of the grand opening of the Rondo Commemorative Plaza, I am especially delighted to congratulate all of you today, all the honorees, in accomplishing this special day to remember. All of your hard work, steadfast leadership, impressive records of service, will be recognized and cherished throughout the community and all nationalities. Your deep commitment to the community as a whole has enriched countless lives and helped cultivate tomorrow's leaders and entrepreneurs. As we stand here today to celebrate all that you have accomplished, Hmong 18 Council wishes a joyful and memorable event. Again, congratulations and best wishes for your continued success to the years to come. Thank you very much. Falta Mata Bahasu. Fomata, Fomata, Fomata. Okay, that was a representative from. Uh, unfortunately, he's here. Nai uh, Nai Tu from the Korean community. Would you come forward, please? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, when you see me, I wear my traditional, uh, you know, cloak. Uh, so you're gonna think like, where is this guy from? <laughs> so maybe you're gonna have a question because my community is very small and very new in, you know, in Twin City. So I would like to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Neetu, and uh, the chairman of the Korean community of Minnesota. I'm from a country called Burma. So, I thank you so much for Marvin Roger that invite me to this event. We don't know each other, but he reached out to me and he recognized me as a, a community. He recognized our people as a community. So. I really thank to him, and I'm really, you know, proud to be here today at Aranda uh, Community Plus the Opening Ceremony. So, my community, we live around in in the Moses in Saint Paul, and. Our population around about 18 to 20,000 in you know uh, Minnesota. So we really happy to be part of you know Randa community, and we learn about the community and Randa community. So here we here today to learn about. Uh, the history of uh, Randa 
community, the people, the, the black uh, brother and sister that who facing a lot of bad thing, seeing uh, Highway 94 uh, construction started. So maybe that is a new thing for my community. And I learned about that, you know. So it's just uh, the same thing that uh, we are facing in our country too. So this is unforgettable history that we have to remember and celebrate it and honor the people that who are facing the problem in the history. So I would like to order all the people that, you know, uh, who get facing the problem in the past, and then we are proud of be part of the Randall community. So what I learned is uh, the Randall community even is started in 1983, July, and still continue every year on July. So I hope the Randall Festival and the, uh, the honoring of the Randall community going to be continued for uh, generation to the generation. And then we, the Korean community of Minnesota, will be part of the Randall community. And also, I think we have uh, some Korean family live around the Randall community. So uh, we will be part of, you know, uh, community to be grow up together, to succeed together in this land. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Naito. The Korean community chose Rondo, or Rondo chose the Korean community, but they are here now and um, really looking, he has a wonderful story to tell about Burma and how the Korean community has had to uh, flee Burma uh, for their lives. And they wound up here in Minnesota some years ago and they are now living in and around Rondo. So it's welcome to have you in our community and unfortunately, we had some dancers from the Korean community who were going to, who were scheduled to perform this afternoon, but they had another engagement, but we'll have them back again at another time. I'm looking forward to it. Our last speaker this morning uh, uh, of our new residents is not really a new resident, but Iman Dr. Hannah McMaughton of the Dawa Institute on University Avenue has been in the Rondo community now for a number of years. Uh, Dr. Mahamud is a lawyer, a teacher at William Mitchell Law School, and it has become a great pleasure of mine to get to know him and to welcome him from Rondo to the Somali community. Thank you. Bismillah, which means in the name of God, Alhamdulillah, which means praise is due to God. The salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, which means peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad, and all anbiya kulluhum and all prophets of God. My dear brothers and sisters, friends, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. That is the Muslim greeting and the Somali greeting. We all, as a Muslims and as a Somali community, appreciate to be part of this community, especially the Minnesota nice. <laughs> and I believe after Trump, it is still Minnesota nice, <laughs> especially St. Paul. <laughs> I, as an Imam, 
Hassan Muhammad Sempol became part of my life. Whatever happens, I will never forget. Because of the years that I lived here, because I'm the founder of the Minnesota Dawa Institute, the first mosque purchased by the Muslims in St. Paul at University of Dell. So being part of the Rondo community is special for me, for, for my community, and for my family, and for all Somalis in the Twin Cities. And first of all, thank you, everyone who's here, especially Mr. Marvin Anderson, that I heard a lot about him when I heard his name. And when I met him yesterday, I don't know if it was first time or not, that does not match. The name that I heard that from everywhere, I thought activist, young person, that you can find him everywhere as a human being. When I found that was this young man. <laughs> My dear friends, the Prophet says, peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, beautiful statement. He said, Man lam nas, lam Whoever does not thank and give back the community that welcomed him, he disgraced God. So we, as a Muslim community, especially the Somali community, feel not we are part of Rondo, but we feel that we are obligated to give it back and say thank you not only from our mouth, but our action. That's why if you ask the chief and prior chiefs of the police, they tell you between Marion and, and Dell, 10 years ago, what it was that place, and now how peaceful is that place which reflects the meaning of Islam, which is peace, which is not what Trump propagated. The name of Islam is nothing to do with terrorists, as he always says, or other extremists of this country says. But the good news, when I went, when I went home a couple of times, people asked me, uh, especially last time, when Trump became president, how will you survive? I say, let me tell you the truth. Majority of the Americans do not agree what he is saying. That's number one. Number two. And I want to tell this to represent Rena. Number two, I say, thanks God I live in Minnesota. <laughs> yes. When we live in Minnesota, like we feel we live in Somalia. This is home, and we love. And, and being part of Rondo, we appreciate everyone. Finally, I want to let you know that religion of Islam, the whole religion of Islam, you can summarize in one verse of the Quran, which is beautiful that I want to share with you today. That verse says, That is my conclusion, which means the whole religion is two parts. One part is your, your relationship to one God, and the other part is your relationship with the rest of his creation. And that means every creation, including the animals and anything that God created, but the most honored one, according to the Quran, which is one of the verses of the Quran, the most honored in, in the creation of God is the human being. So Quran obligated to us to treat as we love to be treated. Thank you. And we all are one. Let's continue this. She said, my friend, Representative Rena, not to say struggle, to fight. And I agree with her, to fight, to have the humanity back to America. Thank you. finished here and I just want to, just a few more things to do uh, before I turn it back over to our wonderful mistress of ceremony, Sierra Hamilton. Please give her a nice round of applause. I just want our 
But any, everybody who has a deep Rondo connection like me, please stand. I want to see the Rondo people in the house. Our sons and our daughters, thank you all for coming out today. I did see somebody stand up all the way from California. Would you mind if I told everybody your birthday that you just celebrated? She just celebrated her 92nd birthday. All right now. 89, I'm sorry. I put three years. 90, whatever. She came all the way from California. Janice Walton, she's here every year. She can come. She's written a wonderful play. And next year, when we do the Women of Rondo, we want to kind of highlight her story because she was a member of the all young lady African American mandolin band. They were taught the mandolin by a person who was described as the world's greatest mandolin player. He was an Italian man who came to St. Paul and he formed a mandolin, he, he had a program on NBC radio that went national. He had the world's largest mandolin band. And he decided that he wanted to form an all young lady mandolin orchestra. And Janice was one of the members along with her sister. So we wanna highlight that. Thank you and your daughter for being with us here today. And then my final words are, before we tour the plaza, please take a moment to look at the back of your program today. It's the acknowledgments. And the most important part of that back page is the bottom part, where we would also like to express our gratitude to all of our supporters that may not have been listed but who likewise have made a difference in making the plaza a reality for generations. Those people who are listed there, we can't thank them enough. Commissioner Zelig, uh, the city of St. Paul, the funders, the people who have allowed us to dream and execute a dream. Uh, we can't thank the customers enough for being here and showing their support. We can't thank all of you enough, but if you believe me, and I want you to, if your name is not listed there, please, please know that deep in our hearts, we remember your contribution and we thank you. We thank you for being here today, and I'm going to turn it over now to close the program out to our... Let's give Mr. Anderson another hand. And for all the wonderful remarks, thank you so much. We are a community. All right, before we go ahead and wrap things up, I do have a proclamation from the state of Minnesota. And hopefully I don't jumble over any words here. Don't y'all hate that when you have something you got to read and then you didn't? And you looked it over before? Okay, all right, bear with me. All right, so State of Minnesota Proclamation. Whereas, over a period of years, the Rondo community was destroyed and its residents... Sorry, one more. False alarm. it would be more appropriate if Mr. Anderson read it. This is a program, we want to read a proclamation from the Mark Dayton, the governor of the state of Minnesota. Over the period of years, the Rondo community was destroyed and its residents dispersed due to the construction of I-94 that devastated Rondo Avenue. 
And whereas for the past 34 years, Rondo Avenue has sponsored the annual Rondo Days Festival, bringing family, friends, old and new residents together to celebrate the history and legacy of the Rondo community at a multicultural celebration of art, food, music, and family fun. And whereas on July 4th, 2018, after four years of planning, fundraising, and construction, Rondo Avenue, Inc. will dedicate the Rondo Commemorative Plaza as a permanent site to remember, reflect, and reconcile the memory of Rondo in a new and exciting venue. Whereas through the annual Rondo Days Festival and now with the programming and events at the Rondo Commemorative Plaza, Rondo Avenue Week has proven its extraordinary commitment to preserving, enhancing, and sharing Rondo's rich heritage for future generations. Now, therefore, I, Mark Dayton, Governor, State of Minnesota, do hereby proclaim Saturday, July 14th, the grand opening of the Rondo Commemorative Plaza. I want to end my comments, and I will really get off this podium. <laughs> On August the 9th, we want you to come back here again, right here. The Reconnect Rondo will be having a presentation of the status report of the Rondo Land Bridge. So it will be earlier in the morning, 9.30, so it may not be so hot, but look at your websites, look at your Facebook we're going to have a wonderful ceremony here on August the 9th. We want to see all of you back. So we all all right. Can you give yourselves one more hand for being here? celebrating this wonderful occasion to close us up. Thank you all so very much for allowing me to be your mistress of ceremony this morning. I am truly honored and blessed to be here. Thank you so very much. I appreciate my roots. I appreciate where we're going and I appreciate all of you, my community. And so, um, and thank you. Shout out to the board, Rondo Avenue Inc. board. Can y'all just wave your hands if you are here and see here. I'm not going to Serena. <laughs> Appreciate you all. Um, it's been an honor and privilege to serve on the board as well. All right, and to close us out, we are going to have the Reverend Past. You know, I was going to say Reverend Prophet. I was going to give you all these apostles. Uh, Pastor Miller. Let's give him a hand for our benediction. Thank you. Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way. Thank you, Master, for this inaugural event. Thank you for the insight and the foresight of the planners. And thank you for the privilege of being here together in this moment and time of reflection. Lord, please allow this occasion of remembrance to remind us that we live in and are the fulfillment of our ancestors' hopes and dreams. And that we are here today standing upon their strong shoulders. Master, may this occasion of remembrance galvanize us, energize us to rebuild our community afresh and anew. And give future generations an identity about which to be a proud, a community in which to belong, and a proud legacy to carry forward. It is in the name of he who died and was raised again with all power in his hands, even Jesus the Christ, that I pray. Amen. 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 All right, everyone, you are dismissed. Please do sign up for tours. Make sure that you go on a tour. It is amazing. There are refreshments in the back. If you do have